That is the harassment of women, mainly in the workplace. Uh, it's become a major issue in this country right now. Almost every day we hear of different yeah. cases. We have about 100 Democrats in the House of Representatives. They're calling for an investigation of President Trump, who's been accused of harassing women, of abusing women. We have the New York Senator Kristen, oh, Kirsten Gillibrand has called for the president to resign, and that prompted Mr. Trump to uh, say that uh, Ms. Gillibrand would do anything for campaign contributions, which many saw as deeply offensive and deeply sexist. Uh, I want you to take a listen to what Kirsten Gillibrand had to say. Let's watch this. It was a sexist smear attempting to silence my voice. And I will not be silenced on this issue. Neither will the women who stood up to the president yesterday, and neither will the millions of women who have been marching since the Women's March to stand up against policies they do not agree with. These allegations should be investigated. They should be investigated thoroughly. Uh, that is the right thing to do, and I am urging them to do that. Are we going to see an investigation? I have my doubts. I mean, it's this this president has been largely Teflon on this this stuff, even though we've gotten more and more. Uh, accusations out there. Uh, I mean, and there's a tone deafness when you ask anybody in the press office about this to to defend this. You don't you don't get any kind of defense. You just get a no comment, and the and the curtain comes down. Um, they are not interested in engage in engaging at all about the veracity of these claims. They treat all of the questions the same. We've already talked about this. Refer you to the lawyers. Um, and, and because of the, the, the domestic politics and the way that shapes Congress, I think it would be hard pressed to have an investigation that would look credible. Well, yeah, go ahead. What uh, is different now then is that during the, end, the campaign, when, these, when that uh, Access Hollywood tape came up, and again, so our viewers know this is where Trump's voice was recorded, saying yeah. vulgar things about what his celebrity let him do to women, uh, any other candidate would have just withered at that, and he went on to become elected president. So we're in a new chapter in America. We This Me Too movement, that's, right. again, what it's called, because once the New York Times wrote us the story about a big Hollywood executive uh, for years and decades harassing women in a very, very uh, compelling story in Syri you know, with on-the-record interviews, this has just grown and gone into other sectors. This has given the... Uh, Trump, the women who were, uh, uh, who alleged that Trump molested or harassed them, a new stage, a second chance, because now the Me Too movement, yeah. the idea that women should be heard, has revived this. And what we're hearing and what won't go away yeah. is the notion that uh, we have now one, what, three or four members of Congress, three who resigned, maybe a fourth. Uh, I think today another ethics committee just opened mm -hmm. up on a House member just a right. short time ago yeah. where he already had is in mm -hmm. very serious mm -hmm. trouble. So now in this new context, it's a reasonable question to ask, why is the president not, and why yeah. are these charges not taken seriously when we've had a member of the Senate resign? We've had, what, two or three House members resign right. over this, okay. Democrats and Republicans. I don't mean to indicate that the questions are going to go away by any right. means. No, no, you did means. not. Okay. You didn't. <laughs> but it gives, they're going to come every single time. Right, but it means that a few weeks ago, yeah. this issue, or before that, you know, this, the, these waves of stories, yeah, it, yeah. it was over. Yeah. Now, the Democrats are having a second chance to revive it. Let me go to Dan on this. Dan, President Trump says this is some kind of politically inspired witch hunt against him. Uh, I mean, if you look at these bitter allegations going back and forth right now. I, I understand that there are people who think there's a witch hunt, but, but I would like to propose, if their Congress wants to do a true investigation, I would like to know the names of the senators and congressmen where $17 million of my tax money and your tax money was spent to settle sexual harassment yeah, claims against House and point. Senate members. Right. And, and, and that I is think being that discussed. needs to be disclosed. No, it is being discussed, and there are some moves afoot that might make that, that might make, that might make what you're talking about a reality. Do you think there are enough people in Congress that have their hands completely clean to conduct this investigation? <laughs> well, I think the, the disclosure of settlement, since that is done, it would yeah. be a retrospective look. So that is a matter that uh, the chambers could do to make themselves look like they want to get ahead of the game. And certainly there's moves afoot to prevent any new settlements being made mm -hmm. that are kept out yeah. of the public eye. So far it's yeah. been public money, so I think it's incumbent on them to answer for that. Sure. Yeah. I okay. just mean I think Absolutely. it's a pervasive yeah. social problem and yeah. it's really pervasive on Capitol Hill. So right. if you're going to point the finger, you've got to be ready to take the heat. Which yeah. is why <laughs> the, the, in order to deflect it, just revealing settlements that 
you, they've been made already. Yeah. yeah. And then you give the people who know, who they have settlements, the House is elected every two years, that they like know it's coming. <laughs> if they know what's coming, they can Chip, decide what Very quickly, run. Chip, what about an issue like this in Alabama? Does it have much traction among voters? Yeah, I, I think that is, I think the whole Me Too movement was a huge uh, a portion of this, especially for millennial voters. If you look at uh, two of the counties that had the largest swings, they were, it was Tuscaloosa County, which is home to the University of Alabama, the state's largest university, and the other was Lee County, uh, which is where Auburn University is, the second largest uh, university here. Uh, both of those counties went from, uh, I think it was 16, 17, 20 point leads for Trump in 16, to 17 point leads for Jones in this election. And I think a lot of that were millennial, yeah, it was a huge swing. And a lot of that were, was from millennial voters and college age voters who are, you know, thinking about these Me Too issues. They're thinking about sexual harassment. Right. They were disturbed about the accusations that came out about uh, Roy Moore. And so I think it did resonate here, especially in those counties, which could have been the deciding factor. Okay, Lynn, I want to move very quickly on to our last issue, and that is this ongoing investigation into collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. So far, there have been charges against a former Trump campaign manager, Paul Manafort, uh, for money laundering, but that predates his relationship with Trump. And we also had the uh, former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, who's been charged um, for lying to the FBI. Um, what's happening with this investigation? Four people charged, two people already pled guilty. You have different streams of the investigation. One would be whether or not there's obstruction of justice, starting looking at the White House on right. down, then whether or not there are the financial crimes that you mentioned with the former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, and then it would be just what were the connections with the Russians and what was improper and what was done if any, you know, to influence the election, and then who are the various players who did what. Some of this is right now just uh, following where the river goes and then what bucket uh, the findings go into will yeah. be determined. But it's very dangerous for the White House now because you have two people who have pled guilty who are cooperating with the federal investigators. Right. Dan Perkins, is this very dangerous for the White House right now? No, it's not. And the idea that uh, General Kelly uh, pleaded to lying to the FBI has nothing to do with collusion that the, the Democrats have been accusing. Manafort was, as the, the reporter said, his, his potential financial crimes were before the campaign, before any relationship with President Trump as a campaign manager. I, I'm more concerned about the releases of FBI emails from lead investigators who clearly had a bias towards the president. Okay, so uh, before we, and, yeah. Yeah, can we just stick to maybe one topic at a time? Four weeks ago? No, no, four I, weeks we're ago? trying to discuss where the Mueller investigation is, is going. But go ahead, I didn't mean to cut you off, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. I, thank you. I, I'm, I'm saying that, yeah. that the, the, the vice chairman of the Senate committee, Dianne Feinstein, for the longest period of time when asked, is there any collusion, she said consistently there has been none. She's now walked away from the collusion story and is now talking about the possibility of obstruction of justice. If they walked away, if she is one of the leading Democrats and she walked away from the collusion story, maybe she's getting information from Mueller and the special investigators. No, no, there okay. is no. nothing let, there. Let, let, no, first of all, I don't want our viewers to think this is how the American system works. Mm -hmm. Sir, it's just not how it works. The, uh, the, the special counsel does not go in and give private briefings to a United States senator, and, and the senator is the uh, ranking Democrat on the Judiciary Committee. Mm -hmm. So in order to keep this simple, the danger to the White House is, is that if you read the plea agreement that, uh, that, Michael Flynn. that Michael Flynn signed, he has been cooperating. He knows things more mm -hmm. than uh, just the campaign. He might have... Uh, he said in his plea agreement, and he has not been sentenced. Mm -hmm. He is, you know, he he could be asked to wear a wire. He would have. Uh, he could be interviewed without his lawyer. Right. There's right. a lot of yeah. things he may know that may take us down tributaries of this river so we don't even know about. It could go there, and as you say, we don't know about it. Yes. Uh, Jessica, you're at the White House every day. You cover the White House. What's the feeling there? What's the atmosphere like there? About about the Mueller this investigation. Issue, yeah. I, th I mean, I think there's real fear because of what. Lynn is talking about. And we also know the personality of this general. I mean, I covered him in Afghanistan, and I, I've covered him as the national security advisor. This is a maverick guy. He is going to do what's good 
for him and his family, which is, is what he said in, in taking his plea about. agreement, right, yeah. who took the FBI plea, who is now fully cooperating um, with the investigative agencies without an attorney present. Um, and it's not, it's, it's very um, much the case that he was not talking to the Russians alone. He was informing people inside the White House of his conversations. So how high does this go? Does it just go to advisors like Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law? Does it go further up to the president? Right. Okay. And just a quick point mm -hmm. to sum this up. Mm -hmm. That's why you just can't say it, but you're still in danger. Right. OK. We're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> Thanks to all of you for being with us. That is it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.